Okay, so I just got an opportunity to crack open the case. This is actually really good news because I was thinking that these cells wouldn't fit on the inside. So if you look down here, I have them really tight and stacked together. So this is at the bottom of the case, but if you think about it, when the case is flipped over, these will be mounted to the board. So even though it's super tight, between this there is no room whatsoever that would be assuming that if the case came all the way down on top of the batteries which isn't the case but that would actually mean that if you think about this cell being up here closer to where the seal is and if this one's on the other side of the wall where the seal is that's how much space i have to work with in between the two packs as i put them together the nice thing about the seal that i have here this is like some 90a shore rubber there is no compression whatsoever so this gives my case a little bit of additional height i was super sweating here as well i didn't think that a 12s 5p battery of these cells would fit in here i thought it would be a really tight fit but it's actually looking really good because if you look at it in comparison with my battery that's right here it comes all the way over here and this area right here is lining up with this part right here which is actually the bms right now and for this one since i'm building a bigger pack i'm going to be using a charge only bms the best tech d140 which would be a little bit smaller it'll have a nice small footprint so that leaves plenty of space for the fox box unity which I have typically right here, and there actually might be even just a little bit more slight, uh, space if I slide it down just a hair closer to this edge. Uh, this is my 12 volt buck converter that reduces everything. Um, this right here obviously is the power cord uh, that I currently have. So for here on this one, maybe I'll make something just a little bit smaller or shorter. And even though I have a little bit of space here with the seal, I very well could put the BMS right here on top of the battery pack with some of the power cords and that would actually be the space that I need. So I'm really excited about this. I actually feel at ease. I was just at Harbor Freight trying to get a couple of cases. I don't know if you can see them over there underneath the tank. Um, but there was a small box that was really nice for a 12S4P of 18650 cells, but not big enough for 21700s. The next step up case they had is too big. It's a medium, but it's like overkill for this, and I didn't want to have to top mount. So I think I'm going to work on getting these all separated into their proper groups, respectively, as far as where their current voltages are. Um, in the coming days, we'll start some spot welding. I'm going to do them into packs of five, not five in a straight row, but three and then two offset. And then I'll put these back and forth as we go here and there. Um, and then I've got some flat braid wire copper that I'm going to be using to help keep this thing super sleek and thin. And actually right there is a ton of the heat shrink wrap that came in yesterday as well with all of my special Christmas goodies from China. And then as well right here, if you can see, I put a couple pads of uh, foam on top of this battery right here just to make sure that it didn't rattle and come loose, which means that this is free space that I get to use for the 21700 cells. So this is exciting stuff. So we're on to the next stage. It fits, it's a tight fit. The board just got a little bit heavier, but what can you do? We're gonna get mad range and we're gonna see how that actually works out, how the output is uh, from the power output. All right. We have a super high tech setup going on over here. I am getting ready to test this Lito Kala cell for the first time with a high amp discharge. We're gonna be looking right around 15 amps constant discharge throughout the whole power band. Um, so I have some stuff, I got this taped on here. So I've got a lead, we've got the watt meter here. The watt meter is powered off of an external uh, power supply because this thing only runs on a minimum of like four to six volts. So one battery alone wouldn't even power this thing up. So I'm powering it up externally so we can see how this changes. And then I wanted to monitor the temperature. I don't have a high tech infrared uh, camera or anything like that. So all we're going to use is a basic oven thermometer. It is digital. It is uh, taped right to the side. So that should be pretty good. Uh, we're in front of the window for some good ventilation. And I have a high tech heat sink, which is basically a nice stainless steel pan that I have the resistors taped to just in case uh, they need to dissipate any heat. So we're going to set the camera up here on autopilot. We're going to plug this bad boy in and uh, see what kind of uh, amps it's going to put out, if it's going to put out the 15 amps, 
And uh, I'm gonna try and drain it down to about 2.8 or something, which is actually a lot lower than I typically would. So right around three is probably where I'd have my standard cutoff. Uh, and then we'll charge it back up and see how much capacity goes back in to the battery after a charge. So we're gonna start the discharge test now. I actually did two tests. Uh, I'm gonna speed this up and I'm going to spit out some information that I think is relevant based off of the watt meter that's right there in front of you. So test one, we discharge down to 1.99 volts, uh, which is a little lower than I wanted to go, but it actually started to tank really hard after 2.5. If you look away for just a matter of seconds, 10 to 15 seconds later, it tanks down really hard to 1.9, but it rebounded quite nice with a uh, max temperature of 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. As far as discharging, I used four resistors, which based on a Ohm's law calculator, uh, four should have been enough to discharge at a constant current of 15 amps. It looks like we only peaked at 13.79 amps uh, and it pretty much leveled out to 10 after that. So I don't know if I needed to have a fifth resistor in there to keep the constant discharge rate a little bit higher or what. Um, and it looks like for discharge, we discharge about 3.73 amp hours of energy. Uh, peak watts, uh, 48.5, and watt hours, 11.8. Not too important there to me. Uh, on the second discharge test, uh, this time I stopped it at 2.5 volts, 126 degrees Fahrenheit max temperature, uh, or 53 degrees Celsius. And then the same thing, 3.89 amp hours discharge, which was a little bit more than the first test somehow, even though I didn't let the cell dip as low. Uh, peak amps, 13.69, uh, consistent there, uh, 47.6 peak, peak watts and 12.3 watt hours um, going through that. Both of these cells were charged up by my IMAX B6, so they started at a max voltage of 4.04, .04, which is the highest that it can charge it up to. So I feel like we would have got a little more uh, capacity discharged uh, had we been able to discharge from the top at 4.2, but 3.89 is pretty decent. I don't know how 3.73 uh, on the first test uh, gave us less amp hours of discharge, even though it dropped even further down to two uh, volts. But aside from that, those are the numbers that we have right there all right boys and girls it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for the battery is finally done uh, took a good few days I did run a few tests on it if I haven't already put that information in into the video already uh, or I will link you to another video about discharge tests but everything checked out pretty good I just wrapped this up I just have just got it to a full charge it's almost a 50.4 volts which is great a full 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 charge uh, I'm just getting tired of waiting. I want to go for a ride before our traffic starts to hit. Now, let's talk about this battery in comparison to what I've got. I have a Samsung 30Q12S4P, which is about 12 amp hours of capacity. This here is a 12S5P uh, at 20 amp hours um, and should discharge at 75 amps total. I really went with the extra parallel group so that if I want to push, closer to 70 or 75 i'm not maxing out the four cells 60 is my minimum uh typically i write around i have the esc set to 65 or 70 but we're actually going to go out for a range test right now just to see how many miles i can get out of this uh, i tend to average about 40 watt hours per mile with my current battery i get about 10 miles or so Usually what the lap, the normal lap that I do is a little over eight miles and I come back with somewhere between 20 to 30%. This thing should give me about 24 miles based on the calculations. If I could get 20 miles of aggressive riding out of this, this would be great. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do an entire discharge today. We're gonna see what happens, but really I wanna know how it performs overall. Um, where will it sag and so in the discharge test it discharged and it handled everything pretty well at 10 to 13 amps consistently the cell got hot but stayed within the specs uh, it did you know every time I charged it up and discharge it we we're losing about 3500 milliamps which was going only from 4.04 .04 volts down to uh, once it rebounded was like 3.1 uh, volts. So in that range, I feel like we're right on par to hit the capacity. The question is going to be how is the sag? Once it started to drop 
below three volts, the sag really hit really, really, really hard with the resistors that I was testing. This battery pack right here uh, is definitely larger. Obviously, it's a 5P versus a 4P. These are 21 millimeter cells versus an 18 uh, millimeter cell. So we're definitely getting more width and space. I'm gonna pop up a couple pictures here really quick of the entire build. First, I put everything into 5Ps. I glued everything together. I wanted to keep this as thin as possible. So uh, what I did was actually create some little fuse-like looking uh, apparatuses with uh, extra nickel and some copper braid which are welded to the top and soldered to the top to keep this thing as thin as possible to fit in my current case. Uh, this thing is weighing in at 10 pounds flat uh, versus my 12S4P which is about 6 pounds. So I don't know the quick math, but we're probably looking around a 65% increase in weight from the 12S4P to this 12S5P, and we're going for 12 amps to 20 amps, which is almost like, uh, what is the quick math, eight, that's like a 70% increase in capacity for almost double the weight and just under that 60%. So later on, I'm gonna have to do the math to see like if I were to take an equivalent amount of cells to get to this, what would the actual weight be? But typically the 186530Q is the best per pound or per ounce, per gram, whatever it might be. Uh, for weight. So I'm going to plug this into the board now. We're going to take it for a ride. It'll be reporting back to you in just a little bit. 